Today, we're looking at the science of this stuff. Should we cheers? Cider. Cider. Here we go. That, like hard cider, not just juice. Or anywhere else other than America, cider. Check this out. Oh, we are going to a backwoods speakeasy. I don't think I'm gonna have you build any of my places. Yeah. No, no, it's unless it's, you did this on purpose. Very, uh, uh, very I, dangerous. Very unsafe. Today we're gonna to brew up a batch of cider. We're gonna get some freshly pressed sweet cider, um, add a specific type of yeast to it, a little bit of sugar, cap it off uh, to prevent any other contaminants from getting in there, and just leave it to sit for a couple months and we'll end up with some good booze. So what I'm starting with is this easy to carry jug of pressed apple cider. This is a sweet cider, meaning there's no alcohol in it. So what happened is you just took a whole bunch of apples with the skin, seeds, everything on them, pressed them, juiced them, and ended up with this. This is gonna be my starting material to make a really good, uh, strong cider. I'm gonna pour this into the fermenter and I'm gonna add some brown sugar to it. Uh, you can use any different type of sugar, but it is good to add a little bit, especially in the beginning part, because yeast's favorite thing to eat is uh, glucose. And there's easily available glucose in these simple sugars. I use a brown sugar because I like the flavor of it a little bit more, and the more that I add, the higher the alcohol is gonna go up. So if I added this whole bag, I might end up with a you know 14% alcohol, something around there, which is really high, but it's gonna taste terrible. So instead, I'm just gonna give it a little kickstarter with some brown sugar, and I'm also gonna add a little bit of yeast nutrient in there, just to give it that initial kick to get the yeast to really start blossoming and reproducing. And then it's eventually gonna move on and start breaking down the fructose in here to make our alcohol. This is like, this is it. <laughs> so just so you know, I dump this in, I dump this in, I dump that in, we mix it up and we're done. Oh man, this is such a short video. And we have booze. And that's it? That's it. So with my cider, I'm not too strict about measuring anything. I'm not looking for complete reproducibility. I kind of like the fact that I'm gonna get a little bit of a different flavor profile each time that I make a batch. So I use all different varieties of, of apples, all different varieties of yeast, um, different types of sugar, and I kind of experiment and just sometimes I make some really great stuff. Sometimes it's not so great, but it all has booze in it. All right, now let's talk about the science involved in this process. Converting this juice into alcohol starts with yeast, a fungi with the scientific name Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Now inside the cell, glucose molecules, think sugar here, are broken down via glycolysis into two pyruvate molecules. Then to complete the process known as alcoholic fermentation, those two molecules are broken down into two molecules of carbon dioxide and two molecules of acetaldehyde, which are then converted to ethanol. Basically, the concentration of ethanol is the concentration of alcohol in the final mix. And it's also important to note that there are many species of yeast and many variations of brewing yeast, which is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Choosing the right one changes the final mix. You can use a specific cider yeast, but that produces kind of a sulfur smell, um, which is just really nasty, especially if you're brewing it in your house. Uh, you can use an ale yeast, you can use different uh, wine and champagne yeasts. A lot of people like to use an English beer. I don't think that works too good. Um, the champagne is gonna produce a very, very dry cider, so it's gonna use all of the sweetness from it, and that's where a non-fermentable sugar comes in. So if you want to back sweeten a really dry cider, so add some sweetness to it, but you don't want the yeast in there to eat the sugar and to convert it to alcohol, so then you get more booze but less sweetness, use a non-fermentable sugar like lactose. Uh, yeast is actually lactose intolerant. It lacks the enzyme that's required to break lactose down into energy and produce alcohol as a waste product. So you add some lactose to it, it adds sweetness that the yeast can't use. So you pop the airlock on, twist it in, take your cider and shake it up a little, just to get that yeast nice and mixed up, make sure it can access all those sugars. Just leave it to sit for a couple weeks. Oh, look at that. Let the yeast do its thing, which is break down those sugars into alcohol and carbon dioxide. And then, probably about three weeks from now or so, once I see that it stops bubbling, take it out and you've got some good cider. Now at that point, it's gonna be still, uh, so non-sparkling. It's just gonna be a flat, alcoholic cider. Uh, so what you can do then there's still gonna be active yeast in there. So I can transfer it over to another jug 
add a little bit more sugar and I'm gonna use a really easily fermentable sugar this time. So I wanted to use a slightly difficult to ferment sugar to let it go a little longer, but to carbonate it, I'm gonna use a really easy to ferment sugar, something like corn sugar or just straight white sugar right out of your pantry and just a small amount of it. For a gallon, I'm probably only gonna use about two tablespoons. I'm gonna put that in um, and then I'm gonna bottle it. So as soon as I add that fermentable sugar, I'm gonna put it into bottles like this and cap it, and then that closes the system. So now you've got yeast in here that's eating those sugars and producing carbon dioxide, and that carbon dioxide is going to carbonate your cider, and then you get a nice sparkling one. I learned something, I hope you did too. It's kind of how-to, but a little bit of science mixed in. This was my first time to work with Pat here in Boston, which was really fun. And if you wanna learn more about what Pat does, well, I'm gonna let him explain it. Thanks very much, Rob. Uh, yeah, this was awesome. So if you wanna check out some other things that I do, you can check out the link right here, which is naturecalls.tv. You can see some of the insane things that I do with my life. Uh, a little bit more animals, a little less alcohol. And if you go to the description of this video, you'll find some other great links to uh, some cool stuff that we've done. So thank you very much for watching and enjoy your cider. <laughs> if you guys haven't figured it out yet, Pat's a little bit more nerdy than me. I think I'm a little, <laughs> What did she say? I'm, I'm a little bit cooler. Absolutely. We it's were trying really hard to, to make him look cool. Um, Impossible. <laughs> Maybe take the glasses. If you just if just see his picture, he, he looks almost too cool for school, but he's actually a nerd. He fits in with the group. <laughs> All right, we'll see you in another video.